Hey, T-Bob, no pressure. Brett McMaster's Inside the Huddle, powered by the Bayou Ford Group. I need a song of purple and gold to motivate me through divorce hearings this morning. You better bring it. Um, first off, Brett, thank you very much for the support. Um, and good luck. Um, unfortunately, this is probably the least confident I've been on any episode yet. Uh, I had a great time last night. Uh, Hosting the Muscular Dystrophy Gala. Not what you uh, want to hear, Brett, to start off your Friday. Talk about it more later, but uh, we'll see, man. We'll, we'll, we'll see how people feel about this week's episode. To be clear, Brett follows it up with, it's all good. She and I are friends. They're just doing some parenting plan stuff. Shout out to sure, Brett. Brett. So, we really just aired out that Brett. all out for Brett. <laughs> yeah. uh, thank you, though, Brett. Hunt Palmer's in with us every Friday here on Off the Bench. Maybe he's going to yeah, catch his last name out of it. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's open to the public when you post inside the huddle. <laughs> Um, Hunt, we've been we've been accused of of running the victory lap a little too long here for the uh, for the Alabama yeah. game on off the bench. Are you still celebrating? Have you are you, are you looking towards the Grove? Oh, uh, you got to start looking towards the Grove, I guess. What's Friday? the Grove? Um, Friday morning, but it is Friday. Like What's if you'd have me on on Tuesday, I had no chance. <laughs> um, it, I mean, it's that big a deal. I rewatched the game last night. I mean, it's that big a deal um, for the program, really for the state. And I, I do a show in, in Shreveport every Wednesday, and they hate LSU. And they were like, I mean, is this going on a little bit too long? I was like, no, it's not. <laughs> Eight years was too long. Three days is not. You and bad, Bozier? <laughs> it was, I mean, it was, uh, it was awesome to see, but it's time to, to lock in and focus. I was in the facility last night uh, doing my pregame interview with James Craig. Seems like the page has kind of turned there. Well, here, here's the deal, though. It has been turned there. Yes, let's be clear. Like, yeah. us, we have no impact. Like, I love right. how a lot of people are kind of like, Acting like the general public or the media's focus and what we're celebrating talking about has anything to do with what this team is talking about. Like, it doesn't. It's like my wife making fun of me for saying I'm not cutting my hair until LSU loses. Like, that has an actual impact on anything. No, it does. If you would, I would be very mad at you. Exactly. Well, that's what I told her. I was like, no, but for real, if I did now, everybody would get really pissed at me if they lost. So we got to sure. keep it rolling. But either way, the team turned the page Monday, dude. Like, like that's what I was struck by. When I was around that building Monday, and 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 the other part about it is from our perspective, uh, I'm sorry, Matt Luke and company. While I've been very impressed with them kind of punching above their weight this year, um, they just aren't threatening. I'm just not worried about going to Oxford. Not with this team. I'm done doubting this LSU team in any way whatsoever. I will pick them objectively with good arguments to win every single game, no matter who they play for the rest of the year. I just my concern with Ole Miss is. One, it's a it's a free swing. I mean, absolutely nothing to lose. Yeah. And so I can see him going for fourth downs. I can see trick plays. They can do whatever they want. They have they have no fear of losing, and that's a dangerous thing at times. Um, but what they do offensively and defensively, I don't think is is very very promising against LSU. I mean, I was listening to Chase Parham and Neil McCready's podcast on Monday. They they do rivals. Chase going to join me on the pregame show and. You know, they, they were saying, like, a lot of the national narrative is that Ole Miss's offense is kind of clicking and it's working and Rich Rod's got them up and moving. And everybody that covers the team watches it every week and goes, this isn't going to work. I mean, they snap it to Plumlee and he runs. I mean, you'll see a lot of, of more detailed schemes tonight in Louisiana than you will what you see from John Rice Plumlee because he's a 50% passer who can't really stretch the field, but he's literally the fastest quarterback I've ever seen in an SEC game. I mean, he is that fast. He just can't throw. Yeah. Hunt Palmer every Friday with us. Remember, tomorrow, 6 o'clock uh, start, so 4 o'clock pregame for you on the LSU Sports Radio Network. Uh, LSU basketball plays Nichols tomorrow. Yeah. The Colonels come in here. Um, this is a team that you can't overlook. They've already got a victory over Pitt. They took Illinois into double overtime and were lucky. Illinois was lucky to get out of there um, w with a W there. They've got a bunch of transfers. They're led by D'Angelo Hunter, who transferred in from West Virginia. And and while I've I've been okay with LSU through the first two games, you turn over you turn it over twenty plus times, and you just don't know what's going to happen. I mean, at, at that point, you kind of lose control of the game. Yeah, nobody's going to pay attention to LSU Nichols tomorrow unless LSU loses. Here's a thumbnail on Nichols, like you said. You got a senior point guard. Their two wings are transfers from West Virginia and a guy who led Savannah State in scoring. Oh. They went up to Pitt and never trailed. The transitive property doesn't work, but this is this legitimizes them to a degree. They went up to Pitt and won. Pitt's opener was against Florida State in a game that counts in ACC play. They beat Florida State. Florida State already beat Florida this year. 
I mean, so you, these are real teams, real players. Nichols is long. They're athletic. They've turned teams over through three games at an average of 20 times per game. That's LSU's bugaboo. This is a real game. I mean, Will Wade is just not going to schedule very many games against teams that are going to go four and th- and four and twenty six yeah. on the year. Like that's that's out, that's out because it cripples your resume. You've got to have good teams on the schedule. He knows who's going to be good. Nichols is legitimately good, and they will threaten LSU in the P-back tomorrow. Especially like you said, if LSU turns the basketball over, you cannot do it. LSU's good enough on offense to score. When you turn it over twenty six times against. Um, Against a really good VCU team, and you still score eighty two points. Telling you, they've only given up 80, 80 points a game, eighty points in a game three times in that building over three years, and wow. LSU did it over the weekend. That that the LSU can score. They just got to stop turning the ball over, and it's correctable. That's correctable. Shooting is not correctable. You just can't get better at shooting. Well, and the most in year. Maddening, you can stop turning the ball over. And the most maddening part about the turnover stat is that fourteen of them come from Skyler and Javante. Yeah. I mean, that to me is going to be what they may not be able to overcome this year is having a true point guard is having a primary ball handler that you can look at in the last three minutes of the game and say, protect it, or get us a good shot. I was disappointed in, I mean, that was our first post-Tremont last second deal because he had the ball for two years in that spot, and they they just let Skyler go one-on-one. I just don't love it. I know that's basketball now. You spread the floor, but four guys standing around and watching one guy go one on one, I don't like. But so you don't like it either, now, Jordy. You're like shaking it. your head because the other day we kind of touched on this and you seemed a little more like. I mean, it to is be fair, what it he is. Got one out of three, he got a good look. He got a five footer and he missed it. What I will live with in basketball is the ball being in your best player's hand with an opportunity to win the game. And that's what Skyler was. What I would like to have seen was a couple of. You had 10 seconds. Yeah. In yeah. 10 seconds. Do you remember that play? I don't remember what game something. it was. Do you remember that play last year where at one time it was late in the game, probably like three minutes left, not a buzzer beater situation, but like three minutes left, and LSU needed a bucket. So they threw it down to the corner, and they ran a post-to-post screen to get Nas over the top. He caught it and got a three-point play at the rim. Everybody was moving. They knew exactly where they wanted the ball to go. There was a plan, and they executed it. This was not a plan. This was, all right, Sky, go get him. I just don't like that. But Does that play, what, what do you all think, does that play into Skyler's skill set? As well, being that, all right, spread it, go get him type of guy. Well, I think that he was showing that he could slash the other night. He was getting to the rim. No, he was the best player on the He was getting to the rim team. very effectively. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, like, I, I get it. Put the ball in his hands and say, win the game. Um, They're those, just missing Cavell Bigby Williams for the clutch tip. Cav- I mean, that's what, that's, that's what he did last year in all those big games. But they are missing Cavell and Tremont tremendously in the first two games. I mean, it, you look at the, the – even though they out-rebounded VCU by seven, mm-hmm. I believe, total – um, some of those trash tip-ins that he's able to clean up on some of those misses, just like the Skyler missed the other night. I mean, to have him around that rim, that ball hit the ground, Hunt. Yeah. The ball hit the floor. Yeah. On a last-second opportunity to win the game, I mean, the ball hits the wood. That, that can't happen. you got to have somebody around the rim cleaning that up, at least grabbing it and trying to put it back. Yeah, and the other thing, I, I, Days needs more touches and more shots. Yes. He's, he's oh, lethal. Lee, he's he, he's two, he was two for two from three in the game. Yeah. Get the man some shots. Amen. I, I'm with you. Uh, all right, so. Uh, Wait, what do you think about the FBI guy? Oh, that's great. It's yeah. college sports. And it's, I mean, coming, it's coming all year. Yeah, it's fine. It's and, and Wade yeah. knows it. He's a smart guy. There's a great picture in the huddle of him actually a, laughing. Yeah, he's at laughing the, uh, and, and hugging and interacting guys, with yeah. him. Yeah, it's good. I um, would be too. I'm like, I mean, I'm still getting paid $2 million a year. Yeah, What's right, up? Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, real quick, Purple and Gold World Series. Lasting thought before we get out of here. Uh, I just like the fact that the pitchers are healthy and everybody got through it. I got to ask Paul Maneri whenever I see him next why they were all pitching with the sleeve on. I don't know if that was like medical or if that was something that they're doing to like monitor their arms and arm speeds and that kind of stuff, like some analytics type stuff. I don't know, but they were all pitching with sleeves on uh, the whole fall. But everybody looks healthy. The velocities are good. Jaden Hill's throwing a ball now. So if they're healthy, you know, they're going to be okay. I just love um, – I thought Buzzy looked incredible in his uniform. And one of the storylines we covered up since we've been slobbing all over the LSU-Bama game all week was that Buzzy, uh, I mean, he, he cost him. He cost him in game two. Oh, no. Yeah. Did he, he really? He cost him in game two. I mean, really what happened? unprepared. The purple team won. Yeah. Oh. Came back, got gold. Oh, my God. I mean, it's all kind of on Buzz. Um, he got. He saw himself in the mirror in that uniform. Yeah, did I tell you? He was sending T-Bob and I selfies. Yeah. Of yeah, and uniform. he was talking about how he throws like, well, I mean, games. I'm actually surprised at how good I look, basically. <laughs> and then, yeah, right, and then right, so, right. obviously, he got distracted. Look good, but the play of the team, not so much. Mm. Right, uh, safe travels, hit him straight, Hunt. I guess. Have a good call tomorrow. Hunt Palmer of the LSU Sports Radio Network. He'll be on two hours prior to kickoff, so it kicks at six in Oxford. They'll be on at four here on the LSU Sports Radio Network, Eagle 98.1. 
in the listening area and right after the game. We'll close that hour one.